And when we find them, they don't look like this picture at all. Okay, a completely different picture. Okay, and that's what I'm going to go on to share with you. So, um, I'm going to show you a really short film um, about this and about the discovery of all the... Um, oh, that's not it. <laughs> about all the black holes in the universe. Okay, I think we got this. So you can see what's been happening. This is really, really new cosmology, okay? This is uh, very, very recent. Okay. Can everyone see that? As expected, it has a giant feeding black hole shooting a great jet of energy into space. This is the signature of a black hole. Instead of they find evidence for a supermassive black hole. So king. NGC three one one five. NGC 3277 and NGC 3379 in M31 and M32. In total, there's probably 20 to 30 or so black holes that have been found. Yeah, supermassive black holes are supposed to be rare. But Hubble is finding them everywhere, both feeding in active galaxies and lurking quietly in ordinary galaxies. Pretty soon we got used to the idea that everything we would look at would have a black hole in it. You know, after the first three or four cases, we're beginning to wonder, does everyone have a black hole? <laughs> yeah. For exactly. Company. This was completely and utterly unexpected. And this mm -hmm. is really off, you know, hot of the press cosmology that's only happened in the last few years. And really, have you heard about it? It's, it's not that common. People still think that black holes are these, you know, it should be really headline news every day, you know. It's like, so what we found is that black holes, rather than being these strange exotic objects, are actually found at the center of every single galaxy. So the center of our galaxies and the center of um, every single neighboring galaxy. They're not uncommon at all. So people are starting to think, okay, there's something funny going on here. Why are they at the center of every galaxy? Aren't they the end point of a star? And so not quite sort of making that kind of conclusion, but going, okay, there might be something to do with how supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies and the way that galaxies are created. Because if you find them at the center of every single galaxy, um, that might just have something to do with it. So, and that's not the only surprise. So not only are we finding black holes at the center of every single galaxy that we look at, we're also finding that they're not really these guzzling things at all. You know, we're actually finding that um, instead of um, the black hole sort of sucking everything in, guess what? They're actually spewing out loads and loads of material. You know, so it's just the strangest thing. Out of the center of a black hole comes jets of super fast material. Okay, and uh, it's just like, okay, where is this coming from? I'll show you the sort of thing that it looks like. Like the way that it, um, the, the black holes normally look, that's a classical black hole is uh, we often see them as these, this is a spinning sort of accretion disk that um, is supposed to be the material that is really, really shiny bright that's going into the black hole. And uh, we see this material coming out as two super fine jets that we call bipolar jets. So this is like really, really strange. Why is it that these um, super fine jets are coming out of the middle of a black hole? You know, it's not what we expect. Okay, so something really funny is going on. So um, I, just, <laughs> I started to explore all this stuff um, really as, a, as a, um, uh, you know, the quantum physics and the cosmology as a, as a way to um, understand about the body and about healing. And I wasn't expecting to find all this stuff. And as the more I found it, looked, the more I found it was really, really strange. I thought, um, okay, what is going on here? And I looked at some of the behaviors of these jets that are coming out and uh, I realized that um, 
what was what we see in our telescopes, which is so totally unexpected, is that we see electrons coming out at super fast speeds. You know, electrons as little particles and atoms that are coming out of super fast speeds at almost at the speed of light. Okay, and it's like, okay, why is that happening? Nobody's really got an explanation. And then sometimes positrons come out, which are the um, antimatter component of electrons. So sometimes we get um, uh, positrons and sometimes we get electrons. And then sometimes we get gamma rays. So those are a type of light the type of, uh, along the electromagnetic spectrum okay so sometimes we're getting all these things happening and it doesn't sort of come in a particular pattern sometimes it's sort of waves like that sometimes you'll get a gamma ray and an electron and it all goes like that and there's no really making sense of it and why does it go so fast why is it actually going sort of at the, at the speed of light you know, so there's no real explanations for these, uh, these phenomena that we see in our telescopes in regular astronomy. Okay, so it's contemplating all these things, going, okay, what is going on here? Why is it that everything, you know, how is it that everything can sort of fit together? And then suddenly, in a top moment of inspiration, I suddenly understood um, that it, it would all fit together if you actually just change your ideas about black holes completely. And realize that black holes are not destructive they are completely creative okay and uh, so what is happening is that you know that I said everything is coming out of a black hole it's at the speed of light okay well what's really happening is that most of the universe is invisible to us because it's faster than the speed of light yeah and but the speed limit of the universe, you know, have you heard of Einstein's law that nothing could travel faster than the speed of light? Well, I realized that if you change this to actually, this is not the speed limit of the universe, but this is the limitation of our normal consciousness. And suddenly you realize that it's not that this stuff doesn't exist beyond there. It's that we can't normally perceive it. And you can only get that conclusion if you realize that the universe is alive and conscious at every single level. So I took this sort of work from the quantum physicists who are saying that consciousness is fundamental and realized that you have a universe of consciousness of many dimensions, which is what the string theorists say. And uh, the reason why we can't normally see those dimensions is because they're beyond our normal perception. But what we do when we do sort of spiritual work is we go beyond normal perceptions and into these, but now we can see they're super bright regions. So anyone heard of dark matter or dark energy here, yeah? Okay, we now can see that it's not dark matter or dark energy at all, it's super bright. It's actually beyond the speed of light and beyond our normal perception. <coughs> so the, the rule that actually um, you know, says that you, nothing could go faster than the speed of light, it's true, nothing with a mass which is always being the law, can go faster than the speed of light. But our own consciousness can actually go further. And things without mass can travel faster than the speed of light. So what we've been ignoring in our science this whole time is uh, the realms that are beyond this limitation, which I now call the perception horizon. And uh, so we've been ignoring all this stuff, calling it dark, when it's actually the hidden realms of the universe that we've been not been able to see. Because we're so focused on this world, thinking the matter world is all there is.